Retrofuturism is a fascination with how the future was viewed in the past, that is, how the people of yesterday imagined it today. Although their guesses ranged from the laughably wrong to the eerily accurate, they were almost unambiguously optimistic, leaving us contemporaries yearning for a time that never was. Retrofuturism is usually defined as an art movement that revises the vision of the future as depicted by artists, writers and directors of the past. It takes its origins from the popular movement of futurism, which flourished from the late 19th century to the 70s, and exploits the dissonance between the present and the vision of the future of the time. The 60s were a time when these predictions were especially bold everyone from school children to nuclear physicists dreamed of colonies on the moon, jetpacks and flying cars. In fact, it was the golden age of futurism, filled with pure optimism and hope for the future. Among the futuristic dreams of the time were bustling cities with multi-level streets, moving sidewalks and air bridges connecting lines of skyscrapers, teeming with aircraft and spaceships. The happy people of tomorrow will take pills instead of food and live in fully mechanized houses with glass domes and robot maids. Interstellar travel will undoubtedly be feasible, as will probably teleportation. Magazines of that time were full of notes and articles on space topics. Science fiction writers in their works also speculated about future technological breakthroughs and contacts with aliens. Humanity had to cope with urban overpopulation, stop harming the biosphere, and solve housing and food problems. In the future, the quality of life will improve and the life expectancy of people will increase, and perhaps it will be possible to defeat death. Yes, this is similar to the words in the election race. The reverence for the future in the 60s was rooted in the technological enthusiasm and unbridled utopia that had prevailed in society since the late 19th century as a result of rapid technological progress during the Second Industrial Revolution. Electrification, mass production, and other innovations created a general atmosphere of anticipation for inevitable progress that survived the Great Depression of the 30s and continued into the post-war period. In the 21st century, we were all expected to live in fabulous domed underwater cities, vacation on Mars, and host the Olympic Games on the Moon. But something went wrong. The future always seems to us inextricably linked with the present. But decades will pass, and perhaps our grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be touched by the naivety of our ideas about the future, as we are now about the future we saw in the 60s. We cannot hide the fact that the people of that time were truly not only dreamers with a degree of naivety, but also optimists. However, by the 80s, cosmic euphoria began to fade around the world. So huge materials in the form of books, films, flashy posters, music of scientific and philosophical reflections on the future remained only a beautiful fairy tale. The present we find ourselves in now is very different from the rosy ideas of half a century ago. Some ideas about the ideal world have been subject to significant criticism, huge cities filled with highways, cities under glass bells, total robotization no longer seems so attractive to us. Much of the imaginary, fantastic future never came to fruition and was consigned to the dustbin of history. How did it happen that, in just one generation, utopian retrofuturism was replaced by? However, we propose to consider in order the main constituent features of our real life. And really at the heart of it all is a simple observation. The fact is that over the past 40 years, there has been a revolution in information technology. But when it comes to the world around us, a world of atoms, not bits, we see no comparable progress. We have moved from a typewriter to a virtual analog. But the houses we live in, the socks we wear, the cars we drive, and the cities we move through remain the same. Look at economic data over the same period, and you'll see that this story is consolidated. Growth rates and productivity have been declining for decades. Put it all together and you get what economists call the Great Stagnation. This is the story of a promised but unrealized future, a strange flaw at the very heart of modern life. In The Great Stagnation, author Tyler Cowen advanced his theory of low-hanging fruit. The author argued that key 19th century advances such as oil, electricity, and mass education set the stage for an unprecedented wave of innovation that has already occurred at a speed and scale we will never see again. This low-hanging fruit is now gone by and creating new innovations that will change the world in the way that, for example, the internal combustion engine did, will become not only more difficult, but also much longer. Meanwhile, Storrs Hall published the book Where's My Flying Car? in which he argues that regulation, especially regulation of nuclear power and nanotechnology, has stolen the promised new world. These days, flying cars are widely seen as a symbol of futuristic ambition. However, back in the 1970s, flying cars were indeed becoming a practical reality, 
and this future might materialize if the abundance of nuclear power made mass production economically viable and regulators did not intervene to banish the dream. Is this where the story ends? Should we admit that we have missed the future that could have been? Not necessary. As we know in 2021, the pandemic has coincided with a number of technology indicators signaling that the great stagnation may be coming to an end. There are signs that we are now on the cusp of a new transformative wave of innovation in real life. This idea depends on another, the internet, which may seem like a useless distraction to some, will eventually cause a significant increase in production and economic growth. Historians of innovation note that it took decades for electricity to have an impact on the real economy. We should not be surprised if the impact of the internet and equally transformative technology also takes decades to manifest. And now that moment may finally come. Just look at the emergence of powerful new artificial intelligence language models that can not only speak to us but also solve economic, medical and technological problems in the coming years. Artificial intelligence AI will embrace, reshape and stimulate multiple industries, often by exponentially accelerating research that can lead to breakthrough innovations. For example, back in the 60s, the engineers who created the Concorde conducted about a dozen airflow tests using expensive physical models in a wind tunnel. Today, the latest technologies can conduct thousands of computer simulations and tests, thanks to which errors are eliminated. Obviously, this is economically fast and efficient. And yes, one could only dream of these technologies in the 60s. Today, we stand on the threshold of a new era of innovation in nuclear energy, which will allow us to change the old world of technology and even become closer to other planets of the solar system. Put it all together, and the idea that we will overcome the great stagnation seems quite possible. We cannot build the future we were promised. But if we tie this new world to outdated ideas and ineffective policies, it may turn out to be just another mirage. Of course, if the young dreamers from the 70s were transported to our relatively wonderful world, they would not believe that this is the future they so dreamed of. In this world, evil, good and hope remain. But scientific progress has not stopped at all, although it has slowed down. The future could not help but come. It only changed its perspective. This development of events was inevitable for all of humanity. Now, instead of a futuristic utopia, the world has become more like a typical cyberpunk in which most of the world's population is drowning. Classic cyberpunk perfectly illustrates the problem of the disappearance of utopia from public thinking. When getting ready for work in the morning, you charge your smartphone, tablet, headphones, and watch. Coming out of a small box apartment and waiting for a high-speed elevator, since you live on the 26th floor, in a huge cozy ghetto that has grown out of nowhere in a couple of years on the outskirts of the city. When you get out, you get on the unicycle and go to the stop, turning on your favorite music through your wireless headphones through an online streaming service. You pay for your fare with your smartphone, sit down, connect to the transport Wi-Fi and scroll through the online news feed instead of a meter long newspaper. You come across news how another electric car controlled by an autopilot crashed you read about five miraculous ways to treat a headache with plantain on the seventh lunar day, about the successful launch of the first heavy rocket launcher of a private commercial company. Outside the window, school children are playing with a quadcopter, filming another video for TikTok. And now, finally, your stop. It's time to get off the bus and go to the factory to assemble a grain harvester they say that next year only robots will do this. You're trying to fall asleep, staring at your smartphone screen for several hours listening to the wild squeals of the wheels of night racers and hybrid sports cars speeding along a nearby freeway. This is the world in which you and I live from day to day. Now there are no more mythical utopias. There is no more past or future now, there is only the ongoing present.